your hand, and then I'll be more to answer a question. I've never not answered a question with my videos, right? I, it's the same thing. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go through a certain example, though, with you um, to kind of explain something. All right, now, I like to use this example a lot, and I want you guys to understand it. So we have the square root of 36, all right? I can rewrite that as the square root of 9 times 4. We know the square root of 36 equals 6. And the square root of 9 times 4, is that still going to be equal 6? Yes. But what I want you guys to understand is I can break this up, Japonica, into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And that will still equal 6. And I can even take the square root of that, that's the square root of 4. And that can equal, equal 6, right? So there's really no difference. Now, what I want you guys to understand, what this is, is what we call the product, all right? The product property of radicals. And what the pro product property of radicals states, it doesn't matter if I'm taking the square root, cube root, or whatever root. If I take the root of two terms multiplied, I can rewrite it as the root of A times the root of B. All right, you guys need to make sure you write this down and understand it. Because this is what we're going to use to apply this. And I've already kind of you know, um, used this you know, and talked about it in class. But we haven't really ever done a formal definition of the pro um, property of product property of radicals. All it states is if you have two terms multiplied under a radical, you can break them up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Now, but this is for square roots. It doesn't matter. You can do this for cube roots as well. So what they're saying is I can break this up into the cube root of 125 times the cube root of t to the 6th power times the cube root of w squared. OK? This, this works, right? That does not explain much. Do you understand from here to here? Do you believe that's true? The square root of 9 times 4 is 6, and the square root of 9 times the square root of 4 is 6? You don't believe those are true? Well, they are. So what I'm saying is, if you take the square root and you have a product, you can break each and every up term into that root. So now I say, all right, can I take the cube root of a number? I'm sorry? Kind of like the associated Well, not really associated as far as you're breaking. It's, um, not really with the associative property, because that's going to kind of tell you which one to associate you know, your operations with. But um, it's, it's just saying that you can apply this cube root to every single one individually and multiply. All right? So now let's just take a look at what's the cube root of 125? What number multiplied by itself three times gives you 125? Five. Now, we've been working with square roots a lot, and but we did work with higher roots. So what I need to do, since I'm taking the cube root, I want to say, can I write t to the sixth power as a term raised to the third power? t squared raised to the third power. So I can write this as t cubed, or the cube root of t squared raised to the third power times the cube root. Can I write w squared without using our fraction? Can, we, can I write w squared, or w squared raised to the third power without using any fractions? No, right? So therefore, I have 5 t squared. And since I cannot simplify this further, it's going to be the cube root of w squared. And that's my final answer. OK? Yes? What about the 3? That's the cube root of w squared. That means what number, what value times itself 3 times gives you w squared? Well, we don't have an even value for that. So we're just going to leave it as we're just going to leave in that simplified form. Okay. So that is